kindly subscribe for more. Your opinion is welcome. So one question that people usually ask me is how they can know if they are ready to take the USMLE exams or not. So in this video, I want to set the record straight because it's a question that we've all been asking ourselves over and over before going to take the exams. Now, in this video, I will lay down certain points that you should consider when deciding when to take your exams. If you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly do so now and I will really appreciate it. And thanks for watching this video as well. Leave some comments for me if you have any. So, um, we know very well that nobody can ever say they feel prepared enough and because we know that medical students, we are perfectionists and no one can ever um, finish learning all the materials and um, say, okay, I've, I'm done with all the materials, so um, I'm ready to go into, your, um, into the exams. And one more thing is that your desire to get this exam over with isn't enough reason why you should um, go into the exam. Most of the times people make those statements like they feel they feel that or they just want to get this done, um, over with because um, frustration is setting into their studies. Um, a lot of things are happening and maybe family is not agreeing with them studying for this long. Husband is not agreeing. Wife is not agreeing. You are spending so much time with uh, with your books. Um, you are getting burned out and all of that. Um, these are not reasons uh, legitimate enough um, f from my perspective uh, for you to go into the exam uh, because um, you are going into the exam uh, frustrated like you did not genuinely um, get ready for the exams um, so that shouldn't be an enough reason for you to say I'm going to um, get it over with and whatever comes out of it you are okay with it but it shouldn't be uh, one of the reasons now another reason though is family shouldn't push you to, uh, to go take the exams and you go in um, you know yourself better you know that you, um, you know the amount of materials you've covered you know how uh, confident you are when it comes to taking exams you know how confident you are when it comes to um, explaining information to people you know how you feel when you are studying you know how you feel when you are uh, doing questions so you know yourself better and nobody should pressure you to go uh, take the exams one more thing is like we all know that the higher your scores on your self-assessment, the more um, confident you are. And these self-assessments are something that you should uh, trust, uh, trust your self-assessment. Someone who is getting consistently 260s and 270s on the self-assessment should feel more comfortable going into the exam versus someone who has not even passed an NBME at all. So uh, this is something that we can look at. Now, I'm going to give you some points that you should look out for. You should ask yourself these questions. And if you, if the answer is yes, then, or if the response is positive, then you know that you are ready. And the first thing is getting to the point when you feel that you will never fail an NBME again. So going forward, I will say trust your NBMEs. If you are someone who has not passed an NBME yet, then it's likely if you've taken five NBMEs and you have not passed any of them, then sorry to say, but it's likely that you are going to replicate that in the exam. It is something that is possible, even though there are some people who would actually uh, do well on the exam or they would just pass the exam by, by miracle or by the fact that they met concepts that they know. But the NBME is something that you should really trust um, whatever score you get on them. And if that is consistent over three NBMEs, then you should know that, hey, I am actually uh, not ready. But if you are someone who is also um, just getting good scores on your NBMEs, say you are getting above um, 225 on NBMEs, then it means you've really come far. And I will say if you are getting 225s in about three or four NBMEs, you are ready to go take the exam. So it's something that you should uh, consider. Just work on your weak areas, review your incorrect on the U world and take the U world assessment too and go write the exam. You will, you will pass. Um, the next point is when during doing U world, especially when you're doing your second pass of U world, you feel that you are getting the questions correct. 
not because you are privy to the questions, not because you know the questions, um, but because you understand the concepts that they are going after. Um, there are some people, that, as soon as they start reading the questions, they know, they know the answer already because they've already memorized the, the question um, and the structure and then they also memorize the answer but that shouldn't be the case when you are doing the second part of you all you should take time and analyze each line don't rush just take time analyze each line and then ask yourself why is this here why did they say this and when you get your answers ask yourself okay this is why they say this if you are reviewing also go back to the questions and see the reason why it is not other answers but it is rather the correct answer that they said is correct so those are some of the things that you should look out for when you are trying to decide whether you are ready or not now another point is when you can uh, confidently and um, and you, you you are able to explain some basic concepts to other medical students for them to understand so that whatever you are learning um, you should you should it should be part of you you should be able to remember them you should be able to explain them into basic concepts for other people you should feel that confident um, in explaining things to people and that 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 goes a long way to show that you really understand what you are you, you are you are studying and that is one positive way that you can assess whether you are comfortable with the materials or not um also the next point would be um you identifying your weak areas and working on them and then when you work on your weak areas you should see an improvement in your scores so that that tells that there is going to be an addition to your knowledge after reviewing all your weak areas um, by so doing, um, for example, the, what I did, how I was able to identify my weak areas and um, this created a jump in my scores because when I understand this weak area, then I'm able to get more questions correct. The first thing that I did was that people usually say do 100 concepts of anatomy um, when you're about two weeks into your exam, but I decided to do 100 concepts of my, my uh, sorry, 100 concepts of anatomy at the beginning of my studies so that I can apply the knowledge over and over on U World exams on NBME and be confident with it so that today if you ask me where the median nerve passes where which artery it moves with, uh, with where the axillary nerve passes the median um, the median the ulnar nerve and all that like the sciatic nerve or the tibia nerve the common femoral like I know exactly where they are because I have learned them over 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 again so so what I'll say is that some of your weak areas try to learn them early and apply them several times on in your Q banks so that you get confident with them before going into the exam one more thing I did was was that the rapid review session uh, part of the first aid the page that has a rapid review so what I did was uh, with the rapid review uh, I cover the answers and then I look at I, I read whatever they say and I predict the, um, the the answer to it so if I'm able to get the answer correct then I know that I know that topic but if I cannot get the diagnosis or the answer correct per, uh, per the description of the uh, rapid review then I know that that topic is something I should look out for and so I was able to use that to to identify all my weak areas and then so uh, I worked on them and that improved my scores one more thing is that I did my own flashcards like from Pathoma when I was doing Pathoma I made sure that I did my own flashcards from um, from Pathoma like when I'm take, doing a Pathoma video and I know that this this I'm, uh, this topic or this particular thing I'm going to uh, forget it and I put it into my own An Anki flashcards so that going forward I'll have to graduate from these flash, uh, personal flashcards before I know that I am really um, ready and um, I also did some Anki um, sorry um, not I did Anki all right yeah but um, what I want to say is that I did sketching I did some sketches especially um, sketch micro and micro was my my best perform I performed best in micro on my step one assessment and um, that was my highest performance so sketchy micro uh, is something that really helped me micro was one of my very weak areas because the bags are very broad and so I, I, I did uh, sketchy micro and that really helped me so 
um, is something that you want to um, look out for so when you identify your weak areas and you you work on them you should see an improvement in your scores if you are seeing that it means that you are getting ready for your exam last but not least is how comfortable you are with nbme style questions if you are doing nbme and because it's timed you you are fidgeting you are you are not comfortable within yourself you you you, you are not understanding what the questions that you are reading then it's some, some an indication that you are really not ready because the step one exam is also like that when you read the questions you should be able to understand them you should be able to um, analyze the questions as you read it and understand it before you choose your answer so if you are someone who is reading questions and you are not really understanding the questions not i'm not talking about you getting them correct and it's not about getting the questions correct but you understanding what they are going after that means that um, you will not be able if you don't understand what they're going after you are not able going to be able to predict the answer so you being able to read comfortably understand questions be able to avoid making mistakes when reading questions because if you're not comfortable even sometimes when they use the word was or is it changes the answer when they use the past tense or present tense it may change the answer so you should be able to feel comfortable when you are reading nbme style questions so that is something that um, you should really look out for be comfortable before you with questions before you go into the exam because you are going to replicate replicate that same comfort in the exam so this is some of the points that you should really consider if all these things are something that you have worked on and you are you've really seen this in your um, in your preps then you should know that hey you are ready the most important of all the points i've said right now is the is is the um the the, the first point is when you are doing your nbms and you know for sure that there is no way you would ever fail nbme again that means that you are ready to go take your exam so thanks for watching this video kindly subscribe and let me know and whatever you think about this video i'll see you again and good luck i want you to know that if i have been able to take this exam and pass then you can also do it it's all about patience don't think about that money that you are going to lose if you have to start all over again and your registration has to go uh, you have to lose your registration money and start all over it doesn't matter it's more important to pass than to lose a thousand dollars so thank you very much for uh, watching this video i'll see you again in the next one bye